Hello and welcome to this week's mixtape show. And this week, I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Benny from Reinhardt's. How are you, mate? Good, mate. How are you? Very well, thanks. Very well. Let's talk about Reinhardt's, mate. You've got a lot going on at the moment. New album, Full Bloom, is out now. All the streaming platforms. Yes, all that. Yeah, all the all that usual stuff. And out on vinyl as well, which is, yeah, yep. great feeling. Yeah, I'll be jumping on that this week for sure, mate, for sure. And that's through, through your band camp, is it? Through your LinkedIn bio? Or yeah. Your... Stuff. It's actually through the, you can, you're best off getting it through the Cheer Squad Records band camp or our band camp, doesn't make a difference. Right, okay. And your, uh, is it, I did write it down, Reinhardt's band on Instagram, is that right? That's yeah. the one, yeah. So what, yeah, yeah. What, oh, I'll, what I'll do if you're listening to this on the podcast, then the links to the band camps and, and the Instas and, and everything else will all be in the description for this podcast but if you're listening on the radio then Reinhardt's band or Reinhardt's band camp is where you can catch up and connect and get all that good merch and vinyl and stuff like that you got a lot of gigs happening as well Benny at the moment you played Maiden Street Festival last night how was that mate yeah it was great it was sort of like a mid-afternoon show and it was yeah chocolates down there lots of families hanging around and all the other bands were great it was a really cool atmosphere actually really really good one yep yep talking about cool atmospheres this week you're at the vinyl cafe as well is that right no, that was Thursday, just gone. Oh, just eight. gone last week. Was it? Oh, sorry, I thought that was yeah. this week. Sorry, mate, my no, apologies. No, good, man. Yeah, was, <laughs> there's a lot of gigs there to keep track of, so I, I feel much the same as you, getting a bit confused. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to tra- keep track of about eight different bands as well at the same yeah. time, so yeah, it's even harder. Okay, yeah. so, and you've got a couple of big big support slots coming up, Jebediah, the Record mm-hmm. Bite, and also Gaz Coombs from Supergrass as well this week. Oh, yeah. that's December, is it? Yeah, December the 2nd, I think. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So I've I'm talking to Gazzy's management and PR at the moment about potentially getting him on the pod. So, yeah, fingers crossed that'll be a good one. Yeah, because I'm, I'm a big Supergrass fan. And you're also down in Busso Fire Station, November the 25th, right? Yeah, November 25th. Yeah, we're down there. Uh, we, we go down there, Oh, you know, sort of, if not once a year, every second year or something like that. Mm-hmm. We've probably been down there maybe four times or something. But right, okay. yeah, great. Yeah. It's, it's a great little venue and they really look after us. We have a lot of fun when we go down there. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, I've been there quite a few times myself. I've stopped in there for a, they've got some lovely old craft beers on in there. Oh, yeah, they, yeah. they do not, they do nice food in there as well. Yeah, so shout out Fire oh, yeah. Station in Buster. It's one of my favorite spots. That, yeah, it's great, man. It's a uh, walking distance as well for us from, from the motel room to the venue. So, yeah, yeah, very convenient. Yeah, staggering distance. Yeah, for sure. And all those ticket links and everything else will also be linked uh, in the description of this podcast uh, if you're looking for tickets for any of those gigs as well. What else you got coming up? Future plans, Benny, after that? Have you got just more support slots and gigs? Or obviously you're just busy pushing and touring the, the new album at the moment. You're not looking at any new material or anything like that for now? Oh, uh, I'm literally sitting in my studio writing new material as we oh, speak. Oh, cool. Ah, uh, Awesome. <laughs> I was halfway through a new song before you called. Uh, so, oh, yeah, no. Well, exclusive. I guess. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be a while before it, it gets on vinyl, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> I mean, we just got back from Melbourne. We did uh, five shows over there about two weeks ago. Um, and then, yeah, Mayland Street Festival. We've got those two shows you just mentioned coming up. That's it for the uh, for the end of the year. Actually, sorry. Hang on. We've got two shows um, that have just come through. One at The Bird on the 16th of December with Timothy Nelson. He's playing mm-hmm. songs off his album. Um and then the 23rd of December, we're doing a big Christmas show with the Chevelles at the Milk Bar. Right. Oh, so cool, cool. Awesome. Yeah, that'll be great. We, we Again, we sort of do that with them. We've done that a couple of Christmases with them, and those shows mm. are always amazing. They're, they're usually at Mojo's, and they sell out, so Milk Bar this time. So we've got those coming up for the rest of the year, and then – Nothing really planned for the start of next year, but I guess the past, you know, couple of months and the month ahead mm. has been absolute, absolutely yeah. nuts. I imagine. I imagine it has. I imagine it has. Milk Bar as well. That's one of my favourite venues. I love that. It's a great little spot there as well. It's a good one. Yeah. So yeah, I've seen yeah, loads, loads of good bands in there. Okay. Yeah. Penny, let's let's go crack into to your mixtape tracks, mate. Thanks so much for sending them through. Always helps if I get them in advance. It's, yeah, it's great. I think, who did I do? Grunge Barbie, I think I did. And they literally oh, sent them through like five minutes before the time. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I, yeah. But yeah, yours are all right. I had plenty of time, mate. And I, I, knew, I knew quite a lot of the tracks anyway, so it was all good. But, yeah. yeah. You actually, you reminded me earlier on today because I, you know, when you messaged me a week ago or something, I was like, oh, you know, no worries. I'll get that done in my sleep yeah. between now yeah. and the next you know, yeah. a week. And I'm sure enough, I got your message this morning. I was like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know, yeah. I sent that when I got home from, from Psychedelic Porn Crump. It's about two o'clock in the morning. 
<laughs> Did you really? Remember. Ah, yeah, I, I was having that that hangover, existential dread of what I've got to do tomorrow now. Now I'm feeling this rough, and I was like, "Oh, Reinhardt's is tomorrow, and I haven't had their track through yet. I better just shoot him a little <laughs> reminder." Yeah, well, well, sorry well, for least... sliding your DMs at two in the morning, mate. Nothing wrong with that. At least we you know we're all consummate pr- professionals here. Oh, absolutely, mate. Yeah, same, same. Okay, all right. Track one, any for your mixtape, I'll ask you to pick an attention grabber to kick off your mixtape. And what did you pick, mate? I've picked The Who, Won't Be Fooled Again. I, it was a hard one, actually. In fact, all of your questions about the, the songs, yeah. I had to, you know, like they're really great questions. I had to really, really yeah. think about it. And, you know, it's, it's funny because it, it's like when you're like yourself, you've probably been listening to music since you're a kid. And it's like, yeah. God, where do you start? I know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm doing for, for episode 99. I'm my guest is going to be the guy who gave me my very first mixtape when I was when I was like 16. Oh. And then for episode 100, he's going to do me. And I'm only like, I'm like 25 episodes in now and I'm already starting to worry about it. Like I've got 75 episodes to go till I do it because I've got to pick my tracks, but I'm already, already worrying about it. Oh, no, this is going to be too hard. I can't narrow this down. Yeah. Like, and I yeah. try and make it like interesting, but not like a, a chore where people go, especially busy musicians like yourself, just go, oh, I can't be bothered with this. Do you know what I mean? Like I want it to be thought provoking, but not like a pain in the ass yeah. to do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, no, no, not at all. Not at all. It was, it was really cool. Uh, I thought they were really great quest- questions, but yeah, it's just so hard to choose. It's, mm. you know, you really got to, yeah. and yeah. I feel like sometimes when I do this kind of thing, it's not till maybe like the week after, or I go back to listen to, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh man, why didn't I think of that song? Why didn't I think of that? Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think just going back to, to Won't Get Fooled Again, I think I'll, I, I, I just researched it quickly before we came on this chat just to make sure I had my facts straight. But I remember seeing an interview with Pete Townsend like donkeys years ago about the, the recording of that intro. And it was something to do with that synth sort of intro before the guitar comes in. That's like some sort of programmed magic box of tricks that he came across in the 70s. And he programmed it with with people's dates of births and star signs and... <laughs> And all this to to get that to generate that sound. That's what it is. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I'm not I'm not explaining it very well, but yeah, I do a bit of googling on it. But yeah, it was something like that. He, he interviewed people, just random people, and I think one of one of the people's dates and and star signs he used was like his his Indian spiritual guru or whatever. He, he chose him as well, and he put all this data, all this just numbers into this machine, and that's and that and that intro to won't get fooled again is what is what came out. Man, yeah, before awesome, I had no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But obviously the guitar and the Who, I think I've been lucky enough to see them live a couple of times and yeah, just untouchable. Yeah, brilliant, amazing. Oh, you've band. seen them live. I've seen them live twice. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've seen them live twice. Uh, yeah. I saw them yeah. in the uh, mid mid nineties. They did Quadrophenia live in Hyde Park. Uh, slightly slightly soiled by the fact that Gary Glitter was was involved in that production. <laughs> but yeah, and then I saw them at Live Eight when they did the Live Aid sort of 30th anniversary or whenever it was 25th anniversary in the mid 2000s I saw them there just before Pink Floyd and again they were amazing like yeah really really good I think they only did four yeah. songs or five songs that night but yeah the, the Quadrophenia Live was brilliant I think they had Stephen Fry was the narrator like they had so Adrian Edmondson was was on as well like they had so many good people on in that show as well but yeah I do yeah. feel quite lucky that I've, that I've seen the Who live and yeah I think yeah, both I'm, times I'm insanely jealous about that you know like, yeah that's <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's quite a yeah. I mean, everybody's got notches on their on their belts, but that's quite a notch. <laughs> yeah, the Who and Pink Floyd on the same day—that was a big one. I was like, yeah, I yeah. ticked a big one off there. Like, yeah, that was so good. It's almost, it's almost like a real life scenario of one of your questions that you put to people. You know, like if you yeah. could see two bands yeah. in the same day live, who would you yeah. pick? <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, I used to have a question. Just dive, just going off on a bit of a tangent before I had the mixtape format as is now. One of the standard, the last question I always used to ask people was, and I was just looking for validation really, was, you know, when you go to a festival and you have like a, a clash of, of artists on different stages, like at the same time, and you don't know where to go. I, yeah. I had a clash, I had a clash, a festival in 1998 where it was the Verve were headlining the main stage and headlining the dance tent at the same time was James Brown. And uh, the Verve were just, a, it was their last gig or last but one gig. They were splitting up and that was it, finished. And James Brown was like 70 something, you know, been touring for years. And I was just, oh man, it was so, it was like a horrible, horrible quandary to be in. And yeah. I, I put it, 
I never got to see the Smiths live, and that's a big regret. So, I, I, the way the Verve was splitting up, it was really, you know, bitter, and and there was a lot of animosity there. And I just got the same sort of feeling, like if I don't take this opportunity, it will be yeah. like not ever seeing the Smiths. Like the Verve was such a massive band for me, so I chose the, the the Verve. My mate chose James Brown, and then about a year later, James Brown passed away, and then two or three years after that, the Verve got back together for another tour. So I was at, I was absolutely devoted, but I used to oh, wow. I used to I used to put that quandary to people on the on the interview like if you were in that situation what would you do just like looking for yeah. validation and I think all but one person said James Brown and I just stopped asking it in the end I was like no, I'm not going in like, yeah I'm not yeah. I'm not getting what I want out of this okay right yeah. sorry we, we digressed a little bit there okay. track two track two Benny I asked you to pick a song you sing loud and proud when you're on your own in the car or the shower mate what'd you pick. If I remember, I, I know I sent these to you through to you a couple of hours ago, so I should have a better memory than this. But I think it was <laughs> Positively Fourth Street by Bob Dylan. Yeah, it was, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had, I've got one note on my little run sheet there I've got for this. And it, it put me in mind a bit of like, you're so vain in, in that kind of, it's got that <laughs> sort of, what is this about? Who is this about? sort of yeah. vibe about it do you know what i mean like it's a oh, bit yeah. mysterious on it like it no one really knows like who or you know who he's talking about in the song and yeah yeah, yeah. great track though yeah. i often wonder the same thing and it's like it's the ultimate it's like it's got he's got so much venom in you know like in his delivery you know he's just yeah. like you would not want to be on the other end of that you know like in a in, i guess in like a bob dylan folk kind of way i don't feel yeah. like you know he he's necessarily capable of beating people up or anything, but like, you know, lyrically yeah. it's like, Whoa, yeah. who, who is he talking about? And what did they do to him? Yeah. 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 No, absolutely. I read something to do. It was maybe some guy had been asked like dozens and dozens of times. It was him. It was someone to do with, with the Greenwich village sort of folk scene in, in New York in the, in the sixties. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't research too far on it, but that seems to be the general sort of consensus is it's about that guy. Track three with your with your next tape, I asked you to pick uh, your favorite cover version and you went with rock and roll star Patty Smith. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so I guess the story behind this one, like I remember when I got whatever birds record that the song is off, like mm -hmm. the original, I thought it was so cool. Like I, I imagine it to be, you know, when you're living in that time and obviously electric guitars are taking off. Um and that it to me it seems like they're singing about how everybody either wants to be a rock and roll star or, mm. or, you know, or maybe they're saying, just go and do it. I'm not, I'm not so sure, but it wasn't until recently, actually, I'm, I'm starting to get into the, oh, I'm reading a book about Patti Smith and Robert Maplethorpe, I think his name is mm. called Just Kids. And it's a book about when she first moved to New York or Brooklyn, where she was sort of, you know, living in the Chelsea hotel and doing all these sorts of things. And when I was reading the book, I thought I really need to, listen you know like to, to her music because there's a lot about uh, the poetry that she's into and all that mm. sort of stuff and I thought well I'm gonna you know when I go to work I'm gonna start to listen to to some Patti Smith and when that song came on which I had heard before but not a, you know not for a long time so I guess it's a bit of a timing thing with me mm. reading that book and and listening to Patti Smith and also you were asking about a cover um, where where that's kind of come from, but I just think she does the coolest version. Her song mm. is awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot punchier than the original. I think. I, I there's not many covers I prefer, but I did prefer her version. I found it a lot more sort of punchy and and sort of yeah, yeah. A, a lot more of a of an attention grabber than than the birds. Not that I don't like the birds, but yeah, I just I just found it like a I preferred it musically oh, as well. Yeah, it's way more, version. way more rock you know like way more sort of like you know unstable and unhinged and all that sort of stuff mm -hmm. it's really cool and she's yeah. super tough as well and the, you know same with the like we're talking about with the bob dylan lyrically you know mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. yeah just her her delivery and everything is is mm -hmm. is is amazing yeah yeah okay and track four for your mixtape benny i asked you to pick a song you wish you could play to your 18 year old self when you picked this day by sleepy jackson yeah. Okay. So, and I guess another interesting story. I mean, again, like there's 10,000 songs, millions of songs. I wish I could have mm. now, you know, shown to my 18 year old self then. I mean, I was really into music when I was 18 uh, from, a, from a young age. So it's not like I wasn't listening to music and I think, you know, I, I needed to, 
show myself this or whatnot. But I, when I was 18, I guess at high school, you know, it was punk and grunge and, and things like that, that, that was happening at the time. So you only know what you know when you're that age, you know? And funnily enough, we have, Reinhardt's have a, a project coming up where we have to cover a, a Perth band song, mm-hmm. like a recording. Oh, okay. yeah. So again, this is like a little bit of a, what's happening in our world at the moment thing, but mm. I kind of wish I had have paid more attention to the Sleepy Jackson when they were sort of doing their mm. thing, which was probably around when I was that age. I was more obsessed with heavy, you know, big, heavy guitars and and rock and roll and loudness and mm. drinking beer and all these sorts of things. So I think now having li- like I we just started listening to this record together to the Sleepy Jackson one mm. because we're covering that song and. Yeah, I actually f- found it almost like this brand new discovery. Mm. I remember them being around at the time, but I really yeah. didn't pay much attention be- because I didn't really gravitate towards it because I was 18, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, sure. But now I listen to it and particularly from a like a songwriting point of view, I just think that song's amazing. Like it's a very, very, very sort of like Beatles-esque in its mm-hmm. chord progressions and the way the melody starts here and ends there. And being a songwriter, I listen to it and I'm I'm quite blown away how it gets from one point to another so seamlessly. Mm-hmm. And so I guess maybe when I was trying to write songs when I was 18, I, I would have loved to have heard it and had had the perspective mm-hmm. I do now yeah. to, to know, you know, how these songs go together. But I guess that I would have liked to have heard that and maybe paid paid some attention when I was 18. Yeah. Yeah. What sort of stuff were you listening to when you when you were that age, Benny? When I was 18, I, I, I'm going to be, you know, embarrassingly honest here, right? And not that I'm ashamed of it because I grew up in the hills of Perth, Cal, uh, you know, Kalamunda. Mm. It was all skating and surfing. I graduated in the year 2000. So, you know, it was kind of the mid 90s when I was going to high school, um, which is, you know, completely in fashion at the moment. But then, you know, it, it was all obviously all Nirvana, you know, mm-hmm. and and the grunge and alternative sort of music sort of scene was happening. But I mean, I listened to that because my, that's what my older brothers were listening to, but mm-hmm. I started delving back and I went and sort of found punk rock and I found, you know, the clash and, and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, ba- yeah, bands like the who with the rock and roll and all that kind mm-hmm. of thing. So yeah. I was, I was, I was not sort of like listening to that stuff then, but that's how I found all that stuff because mm-hmm. I, I sort of started with, alternative music and then started going backwards rather than kind yeah, of going yeah. backwards, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. But you know, the, the big bands at the time, if you look at like the big day outs and all that sort of stuff, it was mm. Soundgarden and Pearl Jam and all these kinds of bands, you know, I didn't know mm. a thing about, stuff, you know, then. Yeah. And then yeah. now someone, you know, pointed out, well, not now, but years ago, someone was like, oh, well, Soundgarden are just Black Sabbath, you know? And I was like, mm. who are Black Sabbath? Who are Black Sabbath? Yeah. Right there. You know, That's see, who they are. Yeah, yeah. Ah uh, yes, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and Bowie and the Beatles, and you know, like yeah. yeah, all that sort of stuff. Like I found out that went probably when I was in my twenties, you know. So it all started with punk and grunge, I guess, and all that kind mm. of thing. And you know, yeah, as far as look, as far as Perth bands go, it's funny we we're playing with Jebediah next weekend. Mm-hmm. You know, like when I was in high school, they were a massive, and they still are, but they were a mm-hmm. massive deal, you know, mm-hmm. amongst yeah. the the Perth scene. You know, it was indie and uh, indie pop grunge sort of stuff. Like, I mean, we didn't have, we didn't have, obviously didn't have internet really. Mm-hmm. You know, it was no. pre MySpace and all this. Sort of yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. So you have Express Magazine, you have local gigs, and you go and see a band like mm-hmm. that, and it and it would just absolutely floor me. You know, absolutely mm-hmm. floor me because all you got is your CDs, right? Or that's all you mm-hmm. got to go off. So you go and see yeah. a live band like yeah. that and it's like wow so really all the things that influenced me especially being isolated here in perth all the things mm. that influenced me live were things that were either all ages or they were like a big band and you know they they'd mm. you know draw people's attention yeah and, and really it went from there to seeing local bands and seeing bands in your backyard that you didn't even realize like you know world-class bands 20 mm. people might be watching it. like yeah i yeah. just absolutely fell in love with it you know yeah, uh, and yeah, all yeah, i could yeah. think at the age of 18 is how the hell do I do that? <laughs> okay, so track five. Uh, I should you to pick a track that you would put on your mixtape to let the listener know you're romantically interested. And you went with <laughs> Eddie, Eddie Current Suppression Ring, and Gentleman. Okay, yeah, yeah. Again, like lyrically. Okay, so I've been married for a long time, right? I met my wife when yeah. I was 18. She's yeah. also a musician. And now when the question said romantically interested, 
I thought to myself, well, I'm romantically interested in my wife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, then, yeah, yeah. So I thought, well, do I, does that mean I need to choose a song about being romantically interested in her? Because uh, tr truth be told, the first song that came to mind, right, was the Buzzcocks, Ever Fallen in Love. Yeah. But then I thought to myself, I can't choose that because that's about falling in love with someone you shouldn't have fallen in love mm. with. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, romantically interested versus songs that I think are about romance. I wasn't sure how mm -hmm. to answer that one, but I yeah. think current suppression ring, I, I love them a lot. And I think that song, it's kind of like got a little bit of humor in it. It's, you know, about trying to be a gentleman. I think it's a little bit sort of tongue in cheek, yeah, but that's totally. that, some of, of that album I, I think that's great so that that's just one that popped into my mind anyway mm -hmm. yeah you know it's a great track i never heard of them and i had a little look around what's the what's the deal with the gloves like i couldn't i didn't ah. understand oh mate with the gloves on like yeah well it's funny Is you say that because when they first came i was living in melbourne with the band i was playing in at the time when they first sort of started breaking mm -hmm. and i was living at a place called the art house which is i guess melbourne's version of the chelsea hotel when i think about mm -hmm. it yeah in, in north melbourne i was living there and they were playing downstairs and I'd, I'd never, I, I thought, oh, you know, there's a band there every Friday and every Saturday night or pretty much every night mm. of the week. So I didn't really bother too much about going downstairs and watching them. And I wish I had of, but one mm. of my friends walked downstairs and he watched about half their set. And he said the same thing. He came upstairs and he was like, yeah. I really like him. But he was like, this yeah. dude was wearing gloves. And I was like, why are you wearing gloves? And yeah. I thought to myself, it's really, you know, like every, when you think about it on the spectrum of what's weird in yeah. and it's not really that weird when no. you compare it to like <laughs> yeah. Twisted yeah. Sister, you know, yeah. or like yeah. Yeah. something like that. It's not really that outrageous, right? But it seems to be this weird thing that really grabs people's like opinions one way or yeah. another, where they're like, oh man, yeah. I love that record, but I just can't do it because that guy wears gloves. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I think probably the fact they're being a bit like there's probably never no definitive answer on it. That makes people think about it even more. I think there's that. It's that thing. Totally. Yeah, I, I love that track. That was a great track. And yeah, like you say, very yeah. tongue-in-cheek sort of lyrics, but yeah, really good one. So what yeah. I do, Benny, obviously, if you're listening to this on the radio, then you'll hear these tracks that we're talking about in between the chat. But on the podcast, because I can't include the music because it's licensed content. So what I do is I make cool. up a, Spotify, a separate Spotify playlist with the tracks that we're talking about, and then I'll include your album on it as well. And then I'll link that in the description to this podcast so people can go and jump out and listen to the tracks that we're talking about and listen to your stuff as well as we're going oh, through. That's and I'll... Cool. That's... It's such a great idea, man. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's the only way I can, I can get around it on Spotify. It's annoying. And I think with the yeah. format, it gives it so much more context when you can hear the songs like the way, you know, especially when you're talking like you are so passionately about the songs and then we just move on to the next song. Do you know what I mean? Like, whereas <laughs> if you... If you can if you can hear the songs in between, I think it gives it so much more context and it's it's a much better sort of listening experience, I think, when you when you do that. So yeah, I'll try and do that. Yeah, every time, every time. Okay. And finally, Benny, track six of your mixtape. I should pick something a little bit obscure, maybe a B side or an album track or or something like that. And you went with Mr. Soul by Buffalo Springfield. Yeah, yeah. I'm also, I'm very keen to hear what you think about this song, but... I've got something to say about this song. Don't worry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think most people do. I, I don't know how obscure it is. I guess it uh, depends who we're talking to. But now it's funny because that album, which the name of it is, totally escapes me, but is it is it Mr. Salt, the album? Is that what the album's called? I think it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When I was looking it yeah. up earlier, yeah, yeah. So I, I guess half the reason I got into these guys, I watched a couple of documentaries a while back and, you know, Laurel Canyon echoes in the canyon, all this stuff about the sixties and the, you know, the, those areas outside of LA and all that sort of stuff with it, where all this sort of stuff was going on. And I went and got the, the Buffalo Springfield album, which I knew a little bit about them. I knew their, their big songs or whatnot. And I, the first, I think it's the first track off the album from memory, maybe the first or second. And I put it on and I was like, Oh man, I love this. I love like Neil Young, you know, love him, hate him, whatever he is, who he is. And the voice with this, it's got that fuzzed out guitar in it, that incredibly mm -hmm. trebly, crazy, hurting sort of fuzz, mm -hmm. fuzzed out uh, note in it. That grabbed me straight away. The, again, like the way he sings it, that I, I, I really, really love it. And then the next, you know, songs came on in the album. And I was just like, I don't know what the hell this is. You know, it took me a while to kind of like wrap my head around it all. But yeah, obscure. I, I think it's pretty, it's pretty weird. I, I love having, I recently built my own home studio where I'm recording other bands mm -hmm. now. 
and it's really got me listening to things in a really different way. Mm -hmm. And that song, I love the parts and I love the way it's been recorded. And I think it's, it's obscureness comes from just it being a bit of a weird song. You know, it's a, it's a bit weird. It makes you feel a bit weird and has strange parts and goes in strange places. So I guess that, that is the reason for my choice there. Yeah. I think I'll let, I'll let listeners when, when you hear this track after we finish chatting or drop into the Spotify, I couldn't quite put my finger on, but that guitar was sounding extremely familiar. I, I couldn't, I couldn't quite like the riff. I couldn't quite put my finger on it just as I was quickly listening. But yeah, I'll let people make up their own, but I'm sure it's something I've heard before. Okay. Or maybe, I, I might or maybe... to shed, shed some light okay, on that. On. Yeah, go on. Yeah. I, I think it might be the Stones. Um, Can't get no satisfaction. Yeah, satisfaction. Maybe. Yeah, 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 that was it. Yeah, 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 100%, yeah, yeah. Now you can sleep at night. I know that so, feeling when you can't. <laughs> satisfaction was quite early, so I don't know what year that one was, but I don't know who's knocked two off there. I, I, they're probably quite close, I'm not sure. Um, I think everyone was kind of knocking everybody off, weren't they? And yeah, it's that time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was. Like playing yeah. each other's songs and doing covers. And if not, maybe like a bit of a sideways version of it, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, th I can't remember who I was talking to about it. I think it was Clint Boone when he was on about from Inspiral Carpets and we were talking about that. And yeah, we were talking about how economical bands were in the in the 60s. No, I tell you it was. It was Hannah from from the Psychotic Reactions. And oh. she was she was saying she picked a Kinks track and it was literally all day and all the night, but with different lyrics. Like it was yeah. like, it was almost the exact same. It was like one called away from, from being yeah. the exact same riff. Yeah. I think in back in the day there, they were very, they were very economical with, with the riffs and, and melodies and stuff like that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. On that note, Benny, thanks so much for coming on the show, mate. I really appreciate your time and, and picking the tracks and, and coming on and having a chat with me today. Good luck with the album, Full Bloom. It's an amazing album and I wish you all the very best of it, mate. And yeah, hopefully see you again soon, buddy. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate your help and interest in the album as well. Really, really appreciate it. No probs. Cheers, mate. Have a good one. See you later. Thanks, mate. Catch ya.